Welcome to my lecture online. Next, we're going to try to develop the Schrodinger equation for a particle in one dimension. And the way we can do that is to compare small particles, which, by the way, act like waves, to small photons, for example, small energy particles, which, of course, also act like waves. So there should be a lot of similarity between the two. So the way we're going to then do this is we're going to start off with the general wave equation in one dimension. The partial second derivative of the electric field with respect to position is equal to 1 over the speed of light squared times the partial or the second partial derivative of the electric field with respect to time. Remember, when you see the squiggly E here, we're meaning that to be the electric field. The solution of that equation is assumed to be this so that the electric field as a function of position and time can be written as a simple wave like this, a wave equation, which is the maximum electric field uh, displacement times the cosine of kx minus omega t. Notice that omega is the angular frequency, 2 pi f, k is the wave number, 2 pi over lambda, and c is the speed of light, uh, here speed of light, which is the frequency times the wavelength. E sub naught just simply means the maximum displacement of the electric field. We're going to differentiate this equation with respect to time and position. We're going to differentiate twice, so when we get the second derivative of this equation with respect to time, we get minus omega squared times the original electric field equation. If we do the same with respect to position, we get minus k squared times the original equation, the electric field as a function of position and time. If we then take these two results and plug those back in the original wave equation right here, when we replace this by this quantity here and this by this quantity here, the equation looks like follows. If we then divide both sides by the electric field, we end up simply with k equals omega over c. We simply take the square root of both sides and the electric field functions are now uh, eliminated. And so we can say that k can be written as omega over c or omega can be written as k times c. Now we go back to some other uh, information that we have. Uh, for example, we have the energy of a photon can be written as Planck's constant times the frequency or since the frequency is omega divided by 2 pi, we can write Planck's constant divided by 2 pi, which is h bar, times the angular frequency. And remembering that the total energy of a particle that has mass squared is equal to mc squared quantity squared plus the momentum times the speed of light quantity squared. For example, if we now have a particle like a photon that does not have mass, this portion is eliminated and then we can write that the energy of a photon is simply the momentum of the photon times the speed of light which the, the speed of light of course over here can be written as omega over k so we can write as momentum times omega over k. We can then solve for momentum from this equation as writing it as ek divided by omega. How does that work? Well here we go we have momentum so we have e is equal to momentum times omega over k, so we solve this for momentum, we write e times k divided by omega, and we get this. And since omega is 2 pi f, and the energy of a photon is h times f, the f's cancel out, the frequency cancel out, and h divided by 2 pi is simply h bar times k. So the momentum can also be written at h bar k. So now we have three equations we can derive from all that. First of all, we remember that the energy of the photon is h times the frequency or h bar times the angular frequency. That came from here. Secondly, we can write that the momentum of a photon is h bar times k, which is what we had over here, which came from this derivation right here. And finally, the energy of a photon can also be expressed in terms of momentum times c. Right here, that came from here, when of course realizing a photon doesn't have any mass, then we can say that energy simply is equal to p times c. So we have now three equations that we're going to carry over to part two. Remember, the whole object here is to come up with a Schrodinger equation for a single particle in one dimension. So we started with the general equation of the, of the general wave equation that applies to electromagnetic radiation. E here is the electric field. 
we then realize that when we have the solution, we can then use the solution to come up with a different form of this equation that allows us to write the energy of a photon, the momentum of a photon, and again the energy of a photon as p times c. So let's keep that now. We bring it over to part two and we'll show you how we continue to derive the equation, the Schrodinger equation for a particle in one dimension.